and then Roman's music plays and he comes out. Daddy is pissed and he gets into the ring and Zane says, you know, it's over, right? The bloodline's collapsing and it's all your fault. And Reigns is so upset. Owens goes to him, nails him with a stunner. So then the Usos attack Owens and Zane and it ends with Solo Sokoa coming to the bloodline's defense and hits Samoan spikes on both Owens and Zane. Reigns yells for Solo to lift up Zane and he gets speared. And the closing minutes see Jimmy. We've got Solo holding, holding one set of the tag titles and Jimmy has the other set. And Roman wants Jimmy to pass him the tag titles. And this is this is like Jimmy, you know, his his cousin here, Roman, is the guy that can have any girl in the world. And you're going after my ex. And he's not he's saying, I'm not just going for your ex. I want you to hand me your ex. And Jimmy just can't bring himself to do it. So Jay steps in, takes the tag titles and hands them off to Roman. And then they stand in the center. They put up the ones. Minus Jimmy, who just sits in the corner and will not participate with the others as the show ends with Roman and Solo hoisting up the tag titles. I thought a really good segment to go into the show on on Saturday. Agreed. Very strong. And um, I think really sets the stage for Roman and Solo versus the Usos for these championships. And, and I mean, I look at a segment like this and, and my, I think to me, the chances of a title change are so much higher. Um, in fact, that that's probably my prediction at this point that Roman wins every single championship. And we go into Roman and Solo versus the Usos. Um, it seems to be the A story on SmackDown. It's certainly not anything to do with Sammy and, and Kevin. They really are supporting cast right now. To this J the this Usos versus Roman Reigns storyline. With this story, it kind of depends on what your what your timing is of where you want all of this stuff to go. Because if you if you want to get to that Usos match quickly, um, yeah, you could put the tag titles on Roman and Solo, and that makes for a very viable story. You could also do the story of Solo gets pinned here, and then what happens? Or Roman gets pinned, and the Usos suddenly um, have something over Roman here. Like, hey, you failed in, in this big uh, situation that you thought you were going to come in and handle, uh, and, and you fell to them too. I kind of do look at them winning the tag titles, though, as like you do want to get to this tag match with the Usos, and I would think that – I don't know if SummerSlam is too far away for that or if you're looking at – Money in the Bank is that option because you do need something for Money in the Bank. And in all of this, I like I don't see Roman just taking a detour and defending his title at Money in the Bank mm -hmm. uh, unless you build up someone of significance and doing that tag match in six weeks. You could do that. It's possible. And you the can other... do them with or without the tag titles. But I think they're mm -hmm. stronger with them. I could see them wanting to main event that show with um... – I mean, are you going to main event? Like, are you not going to have a, a Roman Reigns singles title defense for a money in the bank, though? I think they've almost elevated like these tag titles are the main event storyline. And right. I, I think, yes, I think you could for for that match. It's a big match. Plus, you're getting, you know, your ladder matches and such mm -hmm. on money in the bank. I, I think that would be a satisfying main event if it was Reigns and Sokoa. Against and of course, Usos. this Raw, you know, Rollins, presumably championship um, that might get defended. Exactly. You'd, you'd well. have that title defense on the yeah. show, too. I mean, doing it this way, we, maybe we should just get into our, our preview then, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just expand on the tag match and sort of where you see this going. Okay. Um. So, you know, having, uh, like, my prediction at this point is is going to be Roman Reigns and Solo beating Kevin Owens and Sammy. Um, I, I think it frees Sammy and Kevin Owens up for Bunny in the Bank which I think would make them a whole lot more compelling, um, makes the match a whole lot more compelling. And I think at this point, it's very clear that they are more valuable as single stars on Raw um, compared to, you know, a tag team. Now, they have been building up, like, tag team t challengers, have they not? Oh, yeah. Like, the like, Judgment Day and Imperium have been set up, like, as challengers for, for sure. Imperium, they not so much, I, I, I wouldn't say. Like, well, at the very least, these, Balor and Priest. Yeah, yeah. Now, could they be going up against the bloodline if if Roman and Solo win? Mm, that, it, it, it's a weird mix, I would say, to do Balor yeah. and Priest against Reigns and Sokoa. Hmm. Maybe they'll create new tag team championships. For uh, they could. Yeah, they're not going to split up the Raw and SmackDown tag titles. They're going to create new tag titles. 
yeah yeah but um yeah i think it's going to be a very good match as usual with this group um sammy Zayn reactions were huge today at the press conference so i think it'll be a very very pro sammy Zayn crowd in saudi arabia they've um, been waiting five years that's how it was promoted was it not so i've been waiting five years for this yeah now would this crowd be incredibly heartbroken when they lose the championship yeah, I would say of all, of all the matches on the card, I think this is the one that you could you could certainly make arguments either way of where this one can go. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a prediction? Um, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll lean towards Reigns and, and Sokoa. I don't feel like super confident either way of of where you go with this one because it, it ultimately depends on on where you're going with the story. But there's there's strong stories either way of whether Reigns and Sokoa win or Reigns and Sokoa lose. What so. is stronger? Okay, um, having Roman and Solo versus the Usos for the tag team championships or having Sammy and Kevin Owens defend against Judgment Day, you know? I would say that if if you want to continue down, like the, the bloodline is imploding, I think them losing here contributes more to that chaos that here they fall short and whether it's, I would not have Roman beat in this match. I think solo losing it suddenly here was the, the most dependable guy and he came up short and it's Roman suddenly distancing himself from every, he's got nobody. But going back to your girlfriend analogy, you know, Jimmy Uso um, mm-hmm. handing maybe uh, his girlfriend's number to Roman. I mean, what, what better drama can you have, you know, for the two of them actually fighting over? I, I, they have a lot they can do like right down to the, thousand day celebration and Roman telling Jimmy to put the title around his waist and mm-hmm. essentially be his errand boy. Um, th- there's a lot you can do there. So th- like winning it would, would not surprise me in the least. Yeah. We'll see. Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, Cody coming over with one arm, uh, in a fight. This is going to be a fight. Um, do you see the tag tag title closing the show? Um, I really think, the Sami Zayn, sorry, Seth Rollins AJ match should mm-hmm. like. I don't think it will. I think Roman closes. You know, I I, th- I think he he's the show closer. But man, just for precedent, I I I think they should have that championship feel like it's a main event championship by having it end have the their show. Five million dollar pyro celebration at the end, and Seth is uh, just yeah. whipping the title around his head. Mm-hmm. But this is the hotter program. You know, in my opinion, Usos, uh, sorry, uh, 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 the KO and, and Sammy versus the Bloodline. So I, I, I do see Roman closing the show. Uh, Cody and Brock, I think Brock wins this match. I think that this is, they've set it up with the arm, and I think you get a third match out of it. Whether it's in six weeks, and then he's got the arm fixed by that point, and you do a big stipulation match in London, um, or you come back to this at a later time, and Brock is your challenger for Seth. Um, that's a good challenger to come out of the show because you need a challenger for Seth. And you look up and down this card, what matches are geared towards creating a challenger for Seth? This is the match. And Seth, it, Seth and Brock is a really good main event for a yeah. Money in the Bank. It's been or, long enough that they have not done that. Pro, like it's been years since the two have uh, d- ha- had a match together. And yeah, I, 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 I see Brock winning this for a lot of reasons. I would not want to beat Brock twice in a row. And Cody can afford it. And they've created this broken arm. And I guess like it is interesting just if this is the story they're going with, if it means any time away for Cody before he comes back, um, mm. because I, it, it I does think, kind of limit how you work these matches with him with a an, a broken arm as opposed to just working a, an injury that is fixed in a week. Yeah, it could be that. I think it also gives Cody a reason to not be entered into the money in the bank match. Um, and you know, because he would certainly be a favorite, and obviously you could come up with a way for him to lose the money in the bank match. Um, but does that risk another sort of L on Cody's record that you know might take away a bit, a bit of his momentum? Maybe there's something there, but maybe it's also you know an outside project or something we don't know about. But in either case, I think at this point it's very clear we're going to get a third match between these two. Um, and that seems like it might be a good fit for SummerSlam. And in addition to that, I think Rollins versus Brock is a very capable main event or semi-main event for one of these big shows coming up. Gunther and Mustafa Ali for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, we're both picking Gunther to win this. Uh, I'm going to speak for way. 
Will it go five minutes? That's the question. I'm going to say no. Um, booking wise, they have absolutely no reason to. Um, they they but, could have a really great 11, 12 minutes. I'm just, I don't know. We, we'll, we'll see. This is, uh, you know, I, I always look back at like that Brock Lesnar ricochet match where it was like, it was a foregone conclusion, but I thought they'd have an entertaining 14 minutes or something. And it was anything but it was two minutes and they, it was just Brock being uh, ricochet being fed to him. Um, well, no, it, it, like, could that really be the thinking here? Hey, like we want to debut Gunther really strong on his first raw, uh, his first PLE as a raw star. So we're going to feed him Mustafa Ali in a, you know, three second squash. I, I um, no, no, not, it, not to that extent. I'm, I'm looking at whether this one gets over five minutes. I'm hoping it does. I, because they, they can no, have a really no great different match. than three seconds, John, you know, like it, it, another way it's, it's for com- somewhat forgettable. I don't think it necessarily showcases the best things about Gunther. Um, I, I, he's the type of champion that I think is more over with like a longer match. Now, <laughs> Ali is in no position, but like in terms of rank, to give him like a great 20 minute Seamus level type of war. So I don't think you're ever going to get that, nor do I even see like that this sort of underdog story for Ali. Last we saw of Ali, he was just, you know, being yelled at by Brock Lesnar um, backstage and, and just kind of looking all sad about it. So yeah, he had to cut his promo on, on Twitter. There's been absolutely zero setup for like this big baby face underdog story for Ali. Um, can they still do it? I guess. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, what type of reaction will he be getting in, in a Saudi Arabia? I, I'm, he's been I, very popular over there. Like they, they were, were taking him around and, um, you know, doing like a video blog with him and, and stuff. Um, so maybe that, that sets the stage for like a big, you know, baby face moment for Ali. And maybe we do get a more substantial match. I'm hoping for at least 10 minutes. That would be wonderful. Um, do they have intentions of actually pushing Ali coming out of this, do you think? Or is it just a one-night thing? I, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe not. Bianca Belair and Asuka for the Raw, the Raw Women's Championship. I, I really like the uh, the changes to Asuka. Um, it's... Her fashion sense is incredible. I don't, I don't mean like, you know, while she's like um, with got her face paint on. I mean, her streetwear is inc- unbelievable. Like, do you see her dress shirt tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, I just, it's I, I think she's really good in the character. Um, you know the, the story itself with the with the uh, the experimental mist is whatever. Um, but I am looking for just something more engaging with Bianca Belair, and um, you know this does feel more of just a holdover. Uh, I don't see Bianca Belair dropping the, the the title here, but nonetheless, they could have a, they could have a nice match. Um, I don't know if they're going to go above and beyond that, but they certainly have the. Of the three women's matches, I would say uh, th- this this could be the best of them. Yes, yes. I mean, these two, I think, always have really, really good chemistry. I I've been enjoying Oscar as a heel. I now this feud though doesn't really seem like it's anything more than just sort of like a holdover for Bianca Belair. Um, they have women's t- really like several of the like the Gunther match, the Rhea Ripley, and Bianca Belair. Like yeah. all three of them feel as though they're just you know it's. It's night of champions, so we got to have these champions make defenses. But would you completely rule out a a title change in this case? I, I mean, could this not be an opportunity to reset Asuka? You know, really put some momentum behind her. Maybe give her a stable. Maybe pair like Isla Dawn and Alba Fire with her or something. You know, could this be a way that hey, like it's a surprise outcome, surprise title change? And we reheat up this division, reheat up this feud. Because who's who's sort of on the table for Bianca Belair to face? Right on now? the raw side, I mean, if you if you're taking out Becky and, Smack and Trish, down. Smackdown. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm looking at a raw title here. Imagine where my head goes to uh, raw. Um, on the SmackDown side, you've got Charlotte. Um, yeah, Charlotte should be back at, at some point. But I mean, you've um, like that that that's a match they have not done at this point. Like that's that's a big match they can get to. What do we see for point. Bianca at Money in the Bank and SummerSlam? Mm. Um, I can see Charlotte for for SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. It's possible. I wonder if you might get a third match with this, and and for this you for that to happen, you would need a title change. I mean, it, it, you you could extend it, sure. Like they've they put so much into this this one year title reign for Bianca Belair, but it's also like I where is she on the current rankings? Um, <laughs> she's already passed the the, the Trish Stratus or whoever uh, Becky. 
in the yeah. modern era. She's already got the record. Who else she's is going to see? She has she's to got the modern era record, so now she can she can drop the title. She could. I I, I don't completely rule it out, but I'm probably still going to go with Bianca. Rhea Ripley and Natalia. I see this being short and very reminiscent of the Zelina Vega match a few weeks ago. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, what is she again? Like plus or minus five thousand? Oh, she's like minus ten thousand. Oh goodness, yeah. It was, it's something crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's been really nothing at all to this build at all. No real effort. Like, has Natalia even had like so much as like a showcase win on TV? Like maybe one, like where she went with the sharpshooter, but they put really no effort whatsoever into making Natalia feel like a you know a real competitor here. So yeah, just to showcase one. And that takes us to Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, which is the first match in the program that I think most would assume we're we're going to get more than one match out of these two. And a very good segment on Monday with the promos building this one up. And I guess if if it's in your mind that you're going to get more than one match out of this, um, how how you get to match number two coming out of this, whether it be, um, you know, I, I would lean towards uh, Trish getting the win then in match number one. Yeah, I would too. Um, another question is like, what do you want Be- Becky doing at Money in the Bank? Do you want her challenging for the title? And is it too soon for her to challenge Rhea Ripley for a title? Could you see um, this being just one match that they get out of this one? It's Becky possible. Moves on. It's possible, but um, something tells me they're just starting to cook with this program. So I think it continues. So I'm I'm probably in agreement that Trish wins this one. Yeah, and you know, with, with Dakota Kai going down with uh uh. Damage Control, which is on... Oh, Damage Control is on SmackDown. SmackDown. Oh, my yeah. God. It's going to take me a while to get these yeah, rosters I don't uh, figured you. out in my in my head. Not to say that we can't just uh, give... give uh, Backstage passes? Visitor passes to who, who <laughs> whoever we need. All right. That's that's the card. It, I, I would say, like, the the top matches, um, the, the two... The world title match, Cody and Brock. Cody and Brock, are you expecting... Um, better match than than backlash what what do you what do you kind of expect for that one um so backlash i i'm trying i i remember really liking i'm sorry so much has happened like since that i i barely i have to really kind of search my my thoughts i thought it was fine i did i didn't it didn't meet my my higher expectation level of and what were people were people upset about the finish for that one because cody got his ass like yeah it was just where, where he where he caught him at the end with the right. with, with the pinfall yeah i i didn't mind the finish i at least i don't remember minding it so i think they'll have a good match because i think cody is really good at selling um i think uh you're going to get a similar type of story as what you got in the hell in a cell match with the torn pack um and i think brock is an incredible aggressor so they're, he's going to you know do a great job of working on that arm so i think it could offer a different more dynamic more interesting match than backlash and probably a pretty lively crowd on on this show if the yeah. press conference is uh, evidence of the crowd heat that we're going to have on this show. 